Cause baby, it ain't over till it's over. Yeah, October didn't end. We are looking at the 2000 Camry. And a couple nights ago, I got a call from the Whiff, who drives this daily. And um, she said, I got to work just fine. I went to leave and the car is not running right. And it smells. Okay, could you describe that? No. Okay, no problem. So now I call up the insurance company, just like last time. Now, reminding you, in October, the ignition coil failed. Do you see anything awry? The ignition coil failed. There were two on this car. The one that failed was this one right here. That's the front one that does cylinders one and four. And I had a PO301 code and PO304 in addition to a PO300 multiple cylinder misfire. So now I call up, this gets to be a fun story. I call up the car insurance company that we have roadside assistance and I tell them uh, I need a tow and where the car is. And he says, okay, let me look all of that up. And he does. And he says, all right, uh, unfortunately we got a little problem. I said, what's that? He said, your towing covers 20 miles. You are 22 miles. Ah, okay. <laughs> so what does that mean? He says, you're going to have to pay out of pocket for those two miles. I said, how much are we talking about? He said, $6 a mile, so 12 bucks. I said, done. So now I call the whiff back, and she's near her job, but a couple of addresses up the block. The tow truck said he's going to be there in an hour. So I get in my car and I run out there and it takes me 35 minutes to get out there. So I'm going up and down the road looking for this car broken down with the four ways on. There ain't no car on that road broken down. I go down the road, I come back up the road, I go down the road again. Nothing. I go to her job, I look for her right outside there. Nope, nothing. Absolutely nowhere to be found. <clears throat> I don't have a cell phone. And now all you kids are going to say, well, that's why you need a cell phone in case this happens. Well, guess what? I'm old school. And back in the day, we didn't have cell phones. So what did you do? You relied on other people. I knew that about half a mile or a mile down the road would be a shopping center. And I ended up at a TJ Maxx store. And I went to the TJ Maxx store and I said, uh, listen, I'm sorry, I, there was only a dark blouse behind the counter, unfortunately. I said, listen, I'm very sorry. I, I need to ask a favor from you. Uh, I have a little bit of an emergency. My wife's car broke down and um, she's not where she said she, she was. And I, in, in the scuffle of trying to get out of the house and get out there, I left my phone. Is there a phone I could use? Absolutely, sir. Not a problem. Come right down here. And she took me to the end of the counter. There's a phone over there. And now she doesn't know how to get an outside line. She had to ask three different people. Finally, one guy goes to the phone, presses nine, and now we have an outside line. <laughs> so I call the whiff. She tells me that she's a few addresses up. I said, I can't see a dam on that road. It is completely black outside. It was nighttime. I didn't see you, and I looked as well. I didn't see anybody anywhere. So go back to your job. She said, all right, it's going to take me a little bit to get there. Well, it turns out I end up back at her job, and within a minute, there she was. So I got her. She gets in the car. We start going through to get out of there to turn back onto the main road, and her phone rings. Who is it? It's the tow truck driver who's got this car on the bed. He says, okay, I left it in front of your house. This guy must have drove like 90 miles an hour. I have no idea how he possibly got here so fast. But he dropped the car, and look at this job he did parking this thing. Right off the tow truck. 
That is very impressive, I gotta say. So he parked it here. So now I'm in damage recovery mode. Let me see what the hell's going on. First thing I do is I get the scan tool hooked that up and I read out, and it reads out all the million codes that it has. Now it's pointing out P0303. That's cylinder three misfire right here. Before we had one and four, and now we had just three. And because it was just one cylinder, it did not give a PO300. I said, well, that's a little odd because I don't expect the coil to fail on just one side because as you can see, there's two plugs, two plug wires going into it. So it could be the plug, it could be the wire, or it could be the coil. Well, there's only so much I can do, but somehow at night with a flashlight, I was able to get these connectors off. There's a clip under here. It's about a millimeter long. And trying to get in there with a screwdriver, somehow I did it. And I have a spare set of plug wires that I don't know if they're any good from eight years ago when I replaced them because it was misfiring then. Okay. So anyway, I tried one plug wire, no change. It still runs like a bag of shit and there was no way that this was going to fix it. So it was too dark, too cold, and I didn't want to play anymore that night. So I went in and that was that. Didn't do anything with it yesterday and today it did not get warm enough out to come and play with it so that's why I'm out here. And I said okay, so let me look at the plug and I'll try. I had two other wires that would fit. Well, I went in with a right angle pick, so it's just like that screwdriver I had, except yeah, and that allows you to get right in there, pop the clip, wire comes right off. I tried two other wires on cylinder three, no change, still misfiring, no dice. I said, okay, we'll try the plug. Well, let me show you the problem I had with that. Here's the wrench. You see the duct tape? Yeah. The reason why, let me go back to the car and I'll show you. So it looks like it's right here. You just pull it off, spark plugs right there. Nope. On this engine, for whatever reason, there's a tube six or eight inches long. And you have to put that spark plug socket on an extension and go way down in there. And it's somewhere like down in here. And that's where the plug is. Okay. Well, this plug, this socket, has a rubber thing in it so it can grip the spark plug. You can go in there and take the plug out all day. That's not a problem. But when you go to put it back in, the problem is the socket pulls off the extension, leaving the socket in the engine. So the only way I have to extract that is to put the wrench back in the socket, unscrew the plug, and then the rubber thing will hold the plug in, and then I'm back at square one. So I can't install the plug, I can only remove it. So I had done this once before with electrical tape, but I didn't feel like getting it, and I had duct tape handy, so I did this. And it is strong and sturdy. It's definitely not gonna pop off, but the problem was this tape was just a little too wide to fit down that tube. So I said, all right, screw the plug, let's go for the ignition coil. So here's the deal with that. Five years ago, had a problem with this car where it wasn't running right. It wasn't misfiring, but it was just bogged down and just was very unhappy. And it was this here. A lot of people call it an oxygen sensor, but because this car is California emissions, I think that sticker says it somewhere. But anyway, this is California emissions, which is odd. It's a 5 SFE engine, four cylinder. Somewhere on here it says California emissions. Those are stricter than federal emissions. I don't know why, because this car was sold in New York, but anyway, that's the deal. It's California emissions, and they do not use an oxygen sensor. Instead, they use something that looks just like it and works just like it, but it's called an air fuel sensor. Okay, whatever. After three of them that didn't work or something, I finally got one that did. It's right here, you need a special socket, which coincidentally I happen to have in my pocket right here, just to show you. 
the socket and it has a slot and that's for the wire so that way you could slip it on and unbolt it. So anyway I got the oxygen sensor replaced and it did run right once again. But in the course of trying to figure out what the problem was because the scan tool and the codes it read out were not very conclusive I said well let me get new ignition coils for it. So I did. I went on eBay, I found ones from China and I bought a set of two from China and my dad and I replaced the ignition coils to no avail. And then I found it was finally this sensor that was replaced and it ran right again. So now five years ago I had two Chinese coils on here and it ran just fine. It worked just fine up until October when this front one had failed. A month and change goes by, month and a half goes by, and the second one failed. Fortunately, I had saved the old coils, and that is this mess that you see here. That is the original Toyota coil, one of the original Toyota coils that was on this car, four cylinders, two and three, that is 21, almost 22 years old. And somehow I was able to get in there and pull that connector off the old one, which is buried in there. I don't think the camera can point it out, but right in line with these would be two more sockets where these wires would plug in. So that solved the problem, and I'll show you in a minute. But that just proves that October, because Doo to Doo is a fucking lunatic and a bitch, even if I couldn't get to this bolt and the one down below to change that front coil, which it originally was, I could have done a jobby like this. I could have gone up there. See that gray thing? That's the connector. Unplug two uh, spark plug wires, clip the new one in, and it runs. And it could have been driven home, and then my dad would have helped me with that. Not do it for me, but help me work on... <laughs> getting it actually mounted back up to the engine. So I can't do that myself because I don't have the back for it, but here is the original coil and a new replacement Chinese coil in the front. That's that. So let's go ahead and start it up now and it's going to run fine. I can't demonstrate the misfire to you because pulling this back out, just don't. Okay, <laughs> otherwise I wouldn't be making this video. So now a couple things I'll show you. Uh, first and foremost, Here's the dash cam. I don't know if you can see that yellow line. That's on now. And I had a video on a an automotive power splitter thingamajobber. Well, with the dash cam plugged right in, it has not blown its own fuse in that. So I'm not sure exactly what the problem was. And in the house, I'll leave a link, of course, to that video in the prescription. Uh, in the house, I had that under test for two weeks and it never blew the fuse. So it was the little music player thing, just the way the plug fit or something. But anyway, the dash cam now works. All that's good. Everything's in. And now we're going to start it up. The other thing you may remember from the video on uh, when the first coil failed, and I made the video explaining that now it's fixed, is there was an exhaust leak. The exhaust leak has gotten a lot, lot worse. It's loud now. It's definitely loud. You can definitely hear it. There is almost nothing coming out of the tailpipe because the flex pipe... Oh, my phone's ringing. Hang on a second. So I'm sorry about that. Like I was saying, it's loud. The exhaust needs to be fixed because that flex pipe is totally rotted out. But it runs once again. With this replacement coil, the old one is down in there. You might see the hole on it, I don't know, for one of the plug wires, but it's just in and sitting there just enough that I can drive it out to where I can get to my dad and also get the exhaust fixed. Revs up just fine and runs just fine once again. So there you go. Chinese coils suck. They lasted five years, and if that place in Connecticut weren't such fucking crooks, 
they should have said to me, hey, I don't know how old these coils are, but it would be a good idea to change both so we can do the second one for another 50 bucks because we're in there anyway. Nope, $320 to change one fucking coil. I get this car towed for 12 bucks and put the old coil in. Now I know it's not mounted, I will get that rectified, but it does run once again. So my diagnostic skills are top notch and I got it running and there we go. That's really it. So it was another bad coil. Interestingly enough, not too, too long ago, Scotty Kilmer had a video on some guy who bought a Toyota and he replaced the ignition coils with Chinese ones and they already had started failing. And he said, I would have put the original Toyota ones back on if they weren't bad. And there you go. So I'm putting the original Toyota one back on because like I said, it didn't actually need to be replaced five years ago. I just did it as a matter of course and it didn't run any different because this was the problem. But there you go, purring like a very large cat. It's running just fine. There's no misfire whatsoever. You just have that rolling blah, 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 blah. But before you were here indefinitely, one cylinder was down and the car wouldn't move. It revs up now, it drives, well, I don't know if it drives, I haven't driven it yet, but I can now take it for a test drive. But suffice it to say that it's definitely running now and that misfire is gone. So there you go. Chinese parts. Thanks so much for all this grief and fucking trouble. Jesus fucking Christ. Horrible. Absolutely horrible. But he does run once again. And with God, I don't know, 176 now. Let's take a look. 180.253 on the clock. And listen to that run. Oh, yeah. Now, that rattle is something it has done for, I don't know, 12 years when it's in a low, normal idle. There's something on the exhaust that is vibrating, and it does that every now and again. The car is almost 22 years old, so fine. We can have problems like that. I mean, look. Look at the paint on it. This was hit everywhere, you know? It's a beater. Who cares? It runs once again, and I'm gonna get this over 200,000. I think at that point it might be a safe bet to put her into retirement and have her like in a round town car kind of thing. To put classic plates on it, get maybe get cheap insurance on it, we'll see. But she runs once again with 180 on it. Hopefully, God willing, I'll get 200 out of it. And then, um, you know, it can just live out like the Golden Girls, that kind of thing. There you go. So thanks so much for watching. Fuck my life, but it does run once again. I will get the exhaust fixed and I will get the coil mounted, but this was just to show that even though the scan tool was a bit, you know, it didn't tell me exactly what was wrong. Could have been any of those three things. Could have been the plug, the wire, or the coil. And it was odd that because the coil handles two plugs and they don't fire at the same time, the computer sends spark to whichever one needs it at that exact moment. So it's odd that one half of the coil failed. But anyway, that was it. It was the coil, and there you go. So Chinese parts are wonderful. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you hit like, make sure you hit subscribe, and take care. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.